Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. And we are sipping another of your home brews today. Today it's pumpkin beer. That's right. This is the pumpkin ale that you saw us do on a previous episode. That's right. So this is the recipe from Casey and Jen. Mm -hmm. And we get to taste how yours came out. Let's see, shall we? Yes. But what we want to talk about, the, the, our excuse for getting together and, and drinking this beer, is talking about reusing yeast. Oh, I didn't know we needed an excuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can't just stand here and drink beer. <laughs> well, I guess we could. Uh, <laughs> I, feel we have, I feel we have an obligation. To, to provide view. some content yeah. other than yeah. a other couple than of goobers just... drinking beer. <laughs> Which we can do very easily. Um, but what we did was, uh, there, well, there are a few ways that you can reuse yeast, but we did the easiest one, yep. which is on the day that we brewed this beer, we racked uh, the beer from the previous episode, your vanilla coffee, coffee porter. vanilla porter, away from the primary into right. the secondary onto mm -hmm. the flavorings, and we just put the wort that we made that day into the primary yep. for the porter. So let's talk about reusing yeast in the way that we did. We just racked, um, racked the wort onto the yeast cake in the bottom of the, mm -hmm. that primary bucket. Away it went. Yeah, that was it. And, you know, and it capped it off, airlock. Mm -hmm. uh, shook it to aerate it. Yeah, but. sure. We shook it up, got everything all mixed up really good. And um, you know, it fermented at uh, about 72 degrees, I think, so mm -hmm. fairly warm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but that's what temperature it is in the room that I have. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and for an ale like this, it's, you know, it was, especially, it's you know, with fruit, uh, fruit flavors and such, it's, yeah. it's just fine. Yeah. And, um, and it fermented very quickly as you might expect. Uh, so that's that. But, you know, one of the things that we, we need to talk about, I think, is not just not only what to do, but what not to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, a, a couple of thoughts about that. I think that you need to be careful with the kinds of yeast that you use. So we talked earlier about um, if I was if I had just brewed a big Belgian beer mm -hmm. using Belgian yeast, and then my next beer is going to be some kind of light uh, American pale ale or you know you know something that's mm -hmm. you know not so big and blah blah blah. Don't use that. Yeah. Because it's not going to be the right yeast for that beer. So right. so make sure now the the yeast in the porter was just a regular old California common. Mm -hmm. A, a yeast, so an appropriate yeast for both styles of beer, and I think mm -hmm. that's something you'd want to pay some attention to. Um, I think you also need to pay attention to getting all of the beer off your primary before you put the new beer on it. So in this case, you know, we've got a porter, which is very different from this beer, mm -hmm. and uh, we made sure that we got all that beer off of it or as much as we could. So if you lose your siphon and you're tempted to go, as I do, mm -hmm. you know, if something happens at the end of it and I lose my siphon and I got a, you know, a couple of beers left in there, I don't freak out and try to get every ounce of beer. I just forget about it. But if I was going to reuse that yeast cake, um, I I wouldn't forget about it. I'd mm -hmm. find some way to get that beer off of there. Um, so. And you also want if you are like brewing a a big hoppy beer, lots of hop bitterness, or lots of hop flavor and yep. you're going into say a porter or something mm -hmm. like that there may be some residual bitterness maybe some residual hoppiness in that yeast that you that may transfer over yeah also you don't want to go from a giant barley wine say with high alcohol content right. and reuse that yeast because even though there may be a lot of yeast, it's going to be stressed out because of those high alcohol, yeah. uh, the high alcohol content. Yeah. Now, one one method uh, where this is very useful is you can use you can make a small beer, right. a small moderate gravity beer, mm -hmm. and then use that yeast, use that beer essentially as a starter for a big beer. So yeah. if you're doing a giant barley wine or a, you know. Belgian quad or something where you're going to need a lot of yeast. <laughs> Isn't that a college dorm in Belgium? <laughs> the Belgian, the Belgian <laughs> <That's> quad. Right. <laughs> That's where they put law students. That's a fun place. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're if you're going to reuse your yeast, uh, instead of making a giant starter, you can make a moderate gravity beer yeah, and then idea. reuse that yeast cake for a barley wine or a or a larger beer. Yeah. And it'll take off. Well, and the other, I mean, kind of the most obvious way to do it is make the same beer. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, just, it, you know, true. if you're like me, I've got a little pale ale that I really like, and I kind of tend to make it over and over again. Well, heck, you know, make a, make a batch, rack it off, and make the same thing. Yeah. You know? now, now, you may get some different uh, flavor characteristics from one batch to another. Say, yeah. if you started with, you know, a packet of dry yeast on that first beer, mm -hmm. and then racked it off and put another of that same wort on top of that, mm -hmm. because there's so much more yeast in the bottom of that fermenter, yeah, you're right. you may get a beer with perhaps less complexity, but if you if it's a clean style of beer, mm -hmm. you're not going to miss it. Yeah, and let me put you on the spot for a second. How many times do you think you can reuse? That's a good you question. I got, I've gotten emails from guys who... You know, during their brewing season, that's what they do, is they just, just reuse the, the same, same yeast over and over and over again. Um, so I don't know. I mean, some of them, I, I believe, it's been a long time since I've read this email, but I believe this one brewer said that he could, you know, do it five or six times. Uh-huh. It's something that you want to watch out for. Um, the, other, the other danger that I can <clears throat> see in this would be that if I made a beer and it was infected, mm. and I didn't know it was infected mm -hmm. because it hasn't had time to show up. And then I reused that yeast again. Now I've made two infected beers. Yeah, yeah. So uh, know your sanitation, mm. and, and all the more reason to be very careful with how you sanitize and how you treat your beer, your hands, mm -hmm. any implements. Yeah, and, and, um, that, and that's, a good, that's a good point, is that any imperfections in your yeast may multiply over right. time. Those uh, wild yeasts or the you know the little bugs that are in there may be more dominant than the yeast that you want to be pitching, mm -hmm. and they may take over. And over time, it may multiply. You know, on the other hand, you might develop your own house flavor if it you know if it turns out good. Yeah. Uh, it could be that you sort of develop your own house character in your in your beers. Who knows? Well, but you know that's 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 one way to reuse your yeast. Uh, it's the, as far as I know, the easiest way. Uh, now you can get into washing your yeast, right. all kinds of things. That... Which we'll probably get into at one point. Yeah. Uh, but that, you know, it's, it takes a lot more effort, takes a lot more care in sanitization. Uh, whereas if you, you know, use this method, you still have to be careful. Right. But since you're pitching your wort on top of all this yeast, right. that yeast is going to, it's going to take off yeah. fairly quickly. Uh, and maybe overwhelm the bad guys um, before they, they get a foothold. Right. But it's not an excuse not to be nope. <laughs> a good, <laughs> conscientious cleaner and sanitizer, though. But this is a very good beer. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with it, and it's not too um, uh, spicy. Sometimes mm -hmm. the spice beers, um, even the big boys, the really famous ones, and I won't mention names, but right. I drink them and I go... Not my thing. It's good for once, uh, one one season. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. a, cu a couple in Christmas at the Christmas time. But this one, I I really thank uh, Jen and Casey for this recipe because this the spices are very subdued, but they're there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pumpkin is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a nice beer. Yeah. So I break my <laughs> arm petting myself on the back. Uh, yeah. Came out well. Very good. So there you go. There's another tip that you can try. Reuse, Reuse your, your yeast. yeast. So, we'll see you next time. Happy brewing. Cheers. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, Introduction to Extract Home Brewing, Stepping into All Grain, Low-Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, and our latest edition, Introduction to Wine Kits, and for a limited time, you can find our 2009 Brewer's Logbook, where you can schedule and track the details of up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to james at basicbrewing.com, steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. Pumpkin. Mm, I could drink a lot of this.